Good evening, I'm Greg Sharp, and here is tonight's sports ticker. Husker linebacker Jojo Doman was named today as one of 20 quarter finalists for the Lot Impact Trophy. That award goes to the student-athlete who best exhibits the characteristics of Ronnie Lott, the great safety from USC both on and off the field. Doman has totaled 50 tackles so far this season for the Big Red. NFL action tonight. Denver visits Cleveland. The Browns are a beat-up bunch. They're without their top two running backs and starting quarterback Baker Mayfield, sidelined with a shoulder injury. The Atlanta Braves can close out their National League Championship Series tonight with a win against the Los Angeles Dodgers. The Braves lead the series three games to one first pitch in just over an hour. The Husker soccer team on the road tonight facing Illinois. The match begins at 7 in Champaign. The Huskers are coming off of a win over nationally ranked Wisconsin on Sunday. And the Husker bowling squad will start the defense of their national championship this weekend at the Bearcat Hammer Open in Fairview Heights, Illinois. The Huskers start the year ranked number one in the country. Those are tonight's headlines. I'm Greg Sharp. Coming to you live from Memorial Stadium, it's Sports Nightly. All the Huskers, all the time. Sports Nightly is presented by the NGOT Highway Safety Office, who reminds you to buckle up and put the phone down. Ramir in the backfield on second short. Fake the handoff, rolling the pocket back to throw. Adrian takes a shot downfield, has a man open. It's Ramir, makes a catch. 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Nebraska. Huskers burn that Wolverine defense for a second time in the third quarter. Now Penn State back right. Johnny Parker stopped. A huge block. Nebraska, big block. Couldn't have been better time. Huskers lead. It's 2019, step two. Here are your hosts, Greg Sharp and Jessica Cootie on the Huskers Radio Network. Oh, what a beautiful fall day. It's been here in Lincoln, Nebraska. Once the clouds cleared today, a little Christmas in the air. I know it's probably a little chilly for you, but... What a beautiful day. Yeah, it, it was a little chilly this morning when I took my uh, dog out. The for wind it. was still blowing this morning. Well, I, I stepped out there and I was like, oh, my goodness, I got to go get some layers on. So I had on like five different layers and uh, we, we made it happen. But I just it went so fast. Yep. You know, it was like warm yesterday and cold today. And so but it's all good. It's not too cold yet. Going to be a bye weekend, so a lot of Husker fans I know are going to get out and enjoy some Mother Nature this weekend because they don't have a football game to go to this weekend. The Huskers had again today off. A lot of the coaches have scattered. They're going to get out there for the first time in over 600 days to go visit some high schools, go see some high school football. I bet they're kind of looking forward to that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and just getting to go on campuses and not even just – you know, see the kids for this year's class, but you can kind of maybe see some some guys that might be catch your eye for the future. And so it's just, you know, not something that maybe you don't always see on film. You see it practice. I, I think it was Omar Manning said that when he was a sophomore, it was when he kind of started getting attention. It was because they were coming to a practice. You know, a college coaches were coming to practices at his high school, and he was getting noticed then. So it's just, you know, it's important to see, you know, for the future, not just for this next class. I've talked to Will Bolt, Amy Williams, Fred Hoiberg, because the basketball and baseball coaches have been able to get out over the summer. And they're like, man, it just felt so good to be on the road and see eye to eye a prospect because you learn a lot. You can't do it all over Zoom. You have to probably be around them to kind of pick up some little things that may you may like or you may not like. Well, and Cam Taylor Britt the other day said he knew for a fact that he wanted to play for Coach Shenander when he came and sat in his living room. Right. So those home visits, being able to go in the home and really get to build those relationships with the families as, as well, not just, which like you said, it's just hard to do over Zoom. And so actually being able to be there, see how they are, see how they feel, and then for them to see for these players, for them to see what you are like. And so, yeah, it was kind of, that's what, you see, Cam Taylor Britt said it was a no-brainer for him when Coach Schneider came and sat in his living room. So, you know, th- those moments are very, very important. Here's what we have coming up on the program tonight. Jeremiah Searles will be here in a couple of minutes. We've not gotten his take from the Minnesota game, so he's going to join us here in a little bit. One of the questions I want to ask him is, what was it like for you to have a visit from a coach when you were in high school? So we'll go throw that at Jeremiah here in a little bit. Hour number two, it'll be our volleyball show tonight, normally on Tuesdays. But the Huskers traveled on Tuesday to go to Iowa where they swept last night over the Hawkeyes. So John Cook will be here in hour number two. So get your comments, questions ready for the Husker head coach. Nebraska still in first place after the sweep last night. It wasn't easy at times last night. Dare I say flat 
Jessica, but I think they kind of <laughs> were a little bit because they got pushed in all three sets, but they did prevail. Yeah, I heard Lauren Cook West talking last night about how it's just sometimes kind of hard to get up for those kinds of matchups when you're expected to win, you're expected to dominate. Um, yeah, and on the road you, and creating your own energy, just all that, all that kind of plays into it. And you know, the team had been playing so well. It's funny because you, you say, "Oh, they swept," but then it was like they didn't look good or didn't look as good as they right. have looked uh, doing so. But um, yeah, I mean, it just kind of it sometimes happens to teams, as we said last night. It sometimes happens to teams that they come out a little bit flat. Fans don't like to hear that, <laughs> but that's that's the way athletics is. You can't be that maximum effort every single time you step onto the court or the field or whatever it may be. So John Cook here in hour number two. That's always fun to hear. Uh, from the head volleyball coach. They play, Jessica, five of their next seven matches against ranked teams. So here we go. Kind of came through the softer part of the schedule. Now it's going to be real with Purdue coming to town Saturday. I'm ready. I'm ready to see them play the best. Yeah, it's uh, definitely It's kind of going to be similar to that grind the football team just got <laughs> off of uh, yeah. one right after another uh, of those tough opponents. But, you know, it's it probably bodes well for them that they were able, because they didn't have everything figured out when they started conference play. I think it really has started to click since, you know, the, really the beginning of conference play and this, they continue to grow and get better. So, you know, you, you've been able to figure out your lineup and what kind of works and get, hopefully everybody's back healthy uh, coming up this, this uh for this next stretch and but yeah i think it probably bodes well for them to be able to have worked out some of the kinks leading into this stretch so while husker football's off saturday volleyball is in action eight o'clock first serve purdue they're in the top 10 they got beat last night michigan state beat purdue in west lafayette so they're coming off of a loss so they'll probably be nice and fired up to play the huskers but eight o'clock for purdue next wednesday it's wisconsin they're in the top five and then it's minnesota so it's a it's a It'll be a challenging stretch, but I like where Nebraska is right now. I like what I see with the way this team is playing. I think they've kind of found – I think he's found his rotation that he's comfortable going forward with. And and I think at the beginning when you were – they were switching things up, you were kind of worried about losing your spot. And Coach Cook talked a lot about that. You know, you got to at some point make sure that they're not having to look behind their backs when they make a mistake. But So I think that's allowed for the chemistry to kind of really grow. And this group really loves to play together, which – cannot be an easy thing to do when you have such discrepancies in the age of the players that are playing. I mean, you got six year seniors and then you have freshmen and, you know, getting them to blend and gel. I think, and when I hosted the last uh, Coach Cook show, we talked about that. It just, it's just not easy when there's just that big of an age gap. But these older players have really been so great about welcoming in the younger players and they've been able to gel and mesh. So I think they're just, again, when you got a lot of players that haven't played a lot of anything any sport together but they've now they're kind of getting things figured out and obviously Lauren Stiverns coming back that kind of old adds a whole nother element of just confidence and swagger Krause and Rodriguez playing great as freshmen Lexi Rodriguez might be the freshman of the year and not just even in the Big Ten she might be in the country you're right I'm saying like the national freshman of the year her ability to dig balls is amazing I don't know how she gets to some of those yeah and I when I talked to a couple of players just how big of a game changer and momentum changer that is when she can do that and just not everybody can do it it's it's really it is inc remarkable to watch and she's going to do some big big things here have a great career here in nebraska so the volleyball show coming up in hour number two of the program here tonight and as always we want you to be a part of this one at 402-413-2400 with a call or a text we are up on our YouTube stream as well. The chat room is open. You can jump in there and have some fun with our our regulars who look like they're all in attendance tonight. Have we, do we take roll every night with that? Maybe we need to start taking roll. I think the there's like I, I think from what I've gathered, there's about five or six OGs. Yes. And um, most of them are here about every night. They don't. They very rarely miss. Very rarely miss. Uh, what did you do to the Browns? My gosh, they're getting ready for the Broncos. I had it in the ticker. Half their team's not playing tonight in this and game And not even just Denver. half their team, their stars are out. Yes. I mean, yeah, oh. yikes. That's um, And that's what I was saying when Browns fans are screaming and yelling, and it's, what are you going to do? They're all hurt. So, I don't know. Uh, 
tough, tough going for the Browns. Man, no Baker, no Kareem Hunt. I did uh, see because no I have OBJ on my fantasy team. He's active for tonight. He was questionable, oh. but he's he's back active. Okay. He did not play on Sunday. So well, they're they're going to field the team. They're going to play. They're not going to forfeit. They will play <laughs> the the Broncos tonight. That's in about an hour, and we could see one of the teams uh, punch their ticket for the World Series tonight, as the Braves surprisingly have. Taking a 3-1 lead on the Dodgers. They play game five in L.A. tonight. So uh, I don't know many people, Andrew, uh, other than Andrew, that thought that the Braves would be in the World Series. But here they are, right on the cusp Did of Did Andrew call that? Well, I don't know if he called it, but he's a big Braves fan. Oh, okay. So he's very happy. Well, I was about to say, I guess maybe baseball pickums will be his thing. He's not, yeah, because <laughs> he's not real happy with his football picks. That's tomorrow night where we'll have our football picks. And our chat room folks are, are having their own in, in chat contest going on. And Andrew's already said if those guys start beating him, he's done. <laughs> I think they did. They, they uh, rattled off their scores Records. on Monday. And I'm pretty sure there's somebody that only lost <laughs> two that matched me. So uh, somebody did beat Andrew. That's great. All right, uh, 402-413-2400, the number to dot us up. With a comment or question, uh, we have time to tell you to buckle up, put that phone down, and a reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. We'll take a break. We'll come back with our good friend Jeremiah Searles. He's in studio. He joins us next. The game isn't just about winning or losing. It's about the snacks they share after they've used up all their energy in the field. It's the early morning practice before school and staying late after to get a couple more kicks in. It's the pride they feel for their team and the determination to always keep improving. Sure. The game isn't always about winning or losing, but when they've won the big game and celebration is in full swing, there's only one thing left for you to do. Get them home safe. Buckle up in back. Paid for by NDOT Highway Safety Office. Today's play of the day comes from Nebraska. We pick it up with the local sports announcer at a Nebraska lottery retailer. Dave enters the store. He makes a move to the checkout counter. Looks like he's going to pass. Yes, he's passing the clerk a few dollars. The clerk takes the handoff and spins around. It looks like he's placed the scratch tickets on the counter. And now Dave has them in his hand. It's the old scratch -a He scratches left. He scratches right. Oh, my. He's done it. Dave has scored a bundle of cash. Play is good. Go play. Odds vary by game. At Subaru, they love building vehicles for those who pack a lot into life. The redesigned 2021 Crosstrek is their way of saying more power to you. An upgrade in horsepower means you have a world of fun and adventure waiting for you. And the Crosstrek comes with standard symmetrical all-wheel drive. Love, it's what makes Subaru, Subaru. Visit Deteau Subaru at 27th Street and Jamie Lane in Lincoln or at DeteauSubaru.com. Upgraded horsepower available on select models. Finally, it's time to tailgate, to find your spot in a sea of red, to get together with family and fans, and to share what makes Husker football season the best. This season, share Valentino's tailgater tradition with their big red double jumbo deal and get two one-topping jumbo pizzas for only $17.79 each. Order yours at Valentino's.com. Some restrictions apply. See store for details. Valentino's, the official pizza of the Huskers. Go Big Red. Nebraskans are choosing chiropractic for better health. Why chiropractic? Because it is safe, drug-free, and a cost-effective treatment option for back and joint pain. Plus, all generations can benefit from natural chiropractic care. Choose chiropractic first for pain relief, nutrition, or to improve your mobility, athletic performance, or overall wellness. Make chiropractic your first choice for better health. Find a chiropractic physician near you at NebraskaChiropractic.org. Get your life back with chiropractic. Lutz is an integrated business solutions firm born and raised in Nebraska with offices in Omaha, Lincoln, Hastings, and Grand Island. Lutz provides expert accounting, consulting, financial, technology, M&A, and talent solutions tailored to you. Lutz embraces your business as their own to discover the right solutions to help you thrive. They mind what matters for businesses or individuals seeking a partner to help energize and heighten financial and organizational success. Visit Lutz.us slash GBR. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. You trained for this all year. Endless hours of cardio, conditioning, and weights. And now you are ready. Ready to trek back to your seat from the concession stand. Through the lines, lost fans, and that mascot who wants you to do a little dancey dance. 
all without spilling a drop of your ice cold Bud Light. Welcome back to football, sports fans. At Jimmy John's, we don't make sandwiches. We make the sandwich of sandwiches. We use fresh veggies because we don't hate salads. We just feel bad for them. We make our sandwiches exactly how you want because you're the one who's eating it. And we bake bread all day, every day, because stale bread isn't bread. It's croutons. Sandwich history is written by the victors. Good thing we have legible handwriting. Jimmy John's, the sandwich of sandwiches. Order pickup or delivery on the app. Here we go again. The celebrating, the accolades. Ever since we added Marco to our team, our technology can't lose. Day after day, success after success, Marco's made our business IT a force to be reckoned with. The only drawback of being technology all-stars is keeping champagne away from the electronics. <sighs> Find out what your technology could be saying at marconet.com. Sports Bar and Grill is the place to watch Nebraska games this season. Locally owned and operated, Addie's is Omaha's premier sports bar with four locations in Elkhorn, Maple Street, Millard, and the new flagship Capital location in downtown Omaha. If it's Husker game day, it's on at Addie's. Addie's Sports Bar and Grill is Omaha's official watch party spot with game day giveaways, prizes, fun, and more surprises later in the season. Addie's Sports Bar and Grill. See you there for the game. It's game on at Sid Dillon Buick GMC Cadillac in Fremont, featuring our winning combination of Buick SUVs and GMC trucks and SUVs. And as a GMC business elite dealer, we offer commercial vehicles for your business needs. For the convenient and easy way to shop for your next vehicle, just visit our Fremont location or check out our full inventory at SidDillonBuickGMC.com. You are what drives us, Sid Dillon. We are professional grade. Hey, Husker fans, if you're looking for an exciting new career as part of your pandemic recovery, Iowa has over 75,000 job openings in industries such as healthcare, advanced manufacturing, construction, IT, and ag. IowaWorks.gov has more information about job openings, earn while you learn apprenticeships, and exciting training and scholarship opportunities. Find your next great job in Iowa. They've got a solid game plan, a bright future, and want you on their team. www.iowaworks.gov. Welcome back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres Equipment, Nebraska's premier John Deere dealer. We have 27 locations across Nebraska and into Kansas Acres Solutions for every field. Greg Sharp, Jessica Cootie, and our old pal Jeremiah Searles back in studio. How, how are you, sir? I'm good, man. I'm, as much as I was excited for this bye week, I'm not going to lie, I'm going I'm to miss Husker football this weekend. Like, what are you going to do? Just, I'm Husker just going to hang around the house. Yeah, so I'm hunting tomorrow, I'm hunting tomorrow morning. And then I will also go to Oak Creek's having a Ronald McDonald fundraiser um, out at Oak Creek Sporting Clays, and they're doing a big fundraiser out there. So my wife and a group of guys are going to go out there and shoot the Clays uh, tournament out there on Saturday and then just hang out, watch some football, same on Sunday, and then get regrouped for the, the week coming in next. Are you going to win? For what? The clay, clay shooting contest. I mean, my wife's on our team, so probably not. What? I love you, Emma. She's not, she's not a great shot. It's no. fair, but she no. wants to go out and shoot and have some fun. But, yeah, I don't, I don't think we're going to win. I mean, I'll do my best, but... I mean, I always win, so we'll figure it out. <laughs> Not always. Nah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we're five days removed from uh, the game in Minnesota. What have, have you let that percolate for a few days? What are your thoughts? Yeah, so, I mean, going back and watching the tape, the first half was – not great to watch. I mean, you look at it, and we got pushed around, and we just looked slow. And I, the best way I can describe it is, like, it looked like we were hungover from Michigan. Like, it looked like we had just a little bit of a, a, a trying to get ourselves up again on a Sunday morning after a night out on Saturday and just struggling to go. And you saw that, and, man, you, you can't take anything away from the Gophers. They played probably one of their best games of the year besides the first half against Ohio State. And so they made some good plays. We were just a little slow. But as we locked in, you saw what the Huskers are in the second half. We moved the ball. We got up and down. We took the ball away. It's just, at the end of the day, I think Minnesota was the better team that day. And I hate saying that because I think nine times out of ten we play those guys, we beat them nine. But that's why you got to show up every single Saturday, especially in this kind of league. You, you had mentioned on the sideline that, you know, one of your first reports is that it, they seemed flat down there. I mean, yeah. Were there people kind of trying to get things going, or was it just kind of overall just a blah kind of feel? It just felt weird, and I've been part of those games as a player. And first of all, I love Minneapolis, but 11 a.m. kick in Minnesota, kind of chilly, not a great environment. And when you go on the road, 
you got to bring your own energy, right? You got to you got to show up, and especially when you're going into a place that's not a hostile environment. Like it's easy to feed off the energy in Oklahoma and Michigan State and those places that are hostile. That place was the opposite of hostile. I mean, people were still sipping their coffee in the stands, <laughs> getting ready for the game. And so I just think that we just had nothing, very low reserves in our tank after what we've been coming off of. Kind of a rough atmosphere. And also Minnesota football is it does great of just lulling you to sleep and yeah. not letting you get in a rhythm. I mean, that's what they do. And for the first half, we did not do anything that took Minnesota off their game, which has got us, made us fall behind. And, I mean, we made a valiant effort. and We probably should have came back at the end. But you can't fall behind against teams like that. It's back-to-back -back weeks where the Huskers have had a much better second half than mm -hmm. they did the first. And they were the Michigan game here. That's encouraging, I guess, because the team can find the ability to adjust and kick it to a different level. Yeah, I mean, when you ever you can make those, I mean, for a while, the last few years, we've always been like, man, our halftime adjustments haven't been there, right? We've talked about that and been like, what's going on? Well, we've seen the halftime adjustments have been really good, but now it's, okay, how do we also start fast? How do we now, okay, we know what we can do at ha halftime, but how do we prepare ourselves from Wednesday, really Wednesday on, of, hey, how do you start gearing yourselves up so that when it's time to go, we start fast on all three phases? And then the takeaways in the second half, I mean, that's big. And sometimes can be a little bit contagious moving forward, right? Yeah, I mean, hopefully turnovers come in bunches, right? That's what you want. You want the turnovers to start coming like Iowa, like Iowa right? I mean, Iowa turned the ball over 17 or 18 times or took the ball away, excuse me. But then all of a sudden they don't take the ball away and they can't win. I mean, it just goes to show you that turning the ball over puts you in the percentages of you winning when you take the ball away one or two times is like 90 some percent which is why it's like oh we took the ball away twice but we lost and that's like just so frustrating but you hope that this defense can start being more around the ball hawk getting after the guys more because I think that our coverage is doing a really nice job in the back end Cam Taylor Pritt getting his first one Deontay getting the one but a lot of that comes with our pass rush getting to the quarterback a little bit more too statistically this team will blow your mind because yes Statistically, <laughs> you look at us and you're going, oh, that's probably a five and three football team, not three and five. So we just we go against all the odds of everything that stats say about this, and that's why sometimes you can't fall in with the stats. How about the bye week coming now? Fall break, so they didn't have to worry about class Monday and Tuesday. It has to be really a good, refreshing point for this group. And this team needed it in the worst way. I mean, you look at guys, you got battlers out there that have been fighting through stuff. I mean, Damian Daniels uh, went into the, the tent for a while, came back out. You saw Ramir got dinged up, never came back. Williams got dinged up. I mean, the laundry list of what's going on in that training room right now is, is big time. And so not having to go back out and have another physical game this week is huge. And, and the, to your point, not having to worry about school. Cool. Hey, wake up, come in, get a lift in, get some cold tub, get some recovery, get some massage, get some all the different stuff that are available to you. And the other thing I was talking about this with Nick Hanley on Monday is the ability to get your strength back a little bit during bye weeks because when the season wears on you, you kind of aren't lifting as much as you do have those dings, right? You lift as much as you can, but you kind of start to feel soft almost. And so the bye week's a good chance because you got two weeks to get, hey, put some more weight on my back. Put some more weight on that bar. Give me a chance to feel strong again in the weight room so that can then carry us through the next two weeks because guess what? We get another one in two weeks to do the same thing to hopefully finish strong. Greg had mentioned the stats, and we were looking this up. I mean, you're talking about a top 15 offense and total offense, uh, but just kind of having some issues putting points on the board. How do you offensively go about, you know, finishing drives and getting those points on the board? The biggest thing, finishing drives in the red zone is all about your run game. I mean, you can have the best receivers in the world, but being able to run between the tackles and score football, score the football with the running back is really, really important. And we couldn't do that on Saturday, which was really frustrating. And I know that for forever, the last few weeks, Adrian's ran it in off the zone read. And for whatever reason, we di didn't get under center and sneak in an inch. And there, I'm sure there's a million reasons for coaching. And I know Coach said on film that he didn't like the sneak first. I mean, that's a stout front. But you just have to have a mindset as an offense. Like, hey, we get inside the five. We're just running it in. I don't care if it takes us four chances. And I love Coach Frost going for it on fourth down there. If Yant Nader doesn't fall over his own feet, he scores. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he scores. Right. I mean, yeah. he, there's a corner standing there, and he's either going to plow over the corner or just, like, hurdle hop him over. It's it's so frustrating to see. When's the luck going to flip him? <laughs> ask, your, ask your bills about the quarterback oh. sneaks. I mean, it's not automatic like some fans it isn't. think it's going to be. It is not. And Josh is a big quarterback. I mean, that's a big quarterback. And, I mean, how about, well, you know, I mean, you heard that they're starting left tackle. Taylor Lewan, as the Titans was out. But, no, it's really, I don't know. I don't know if you saw that. That was that whole big thing. I thought yeah. it was hysterical. But I think the QB sneak is the most efficient 
way to gain a yard in all of football. Look at Tom Brady. Tom Brady's been doing it for 20 years, and he's still, I mean, you should be able to get a yard no matter what when you hike the football and fall forward. So when you go through kind of a fall break workout, and you mentioned kind of getting your bodies right and everything, but how much of it is maybe preparing for opponents to come? How much of it is it kind of tweaking, going back to maybe some of the basics? What are you kind of trying to accomplish over these next couple of weeks? So bye week's all about self-scout. As a player, as a coach, as a program, you look at, hey, what have I done up to this point that's done good for myself, whether it's lifting, recovery, studying, what can I do better? What, what have I done that maybe hasn't been great that I can cut out of my routine? Same with the coaches. Hey, what plays have been really good for us? What defensive formations have been most successful percentage-wise? Look at the stats. You don't pay much of attention to the opponent as a player till the next week because you'll chase ghosts. It's really easy. You prepare for someone for two weeks, you start thinking of every possibility, and you can almost be too much. So leave that to the coaches. As a player, just focus on what you can do to get better and really just recovery and making sure you're as healthy as possible. Also go recruit. Yeah. It's been over 600 days since this staff's been able to go somewhere, walk into a high school, and see a kid. How big was that for you to see coaches come down the hallway in your high school? That was huge. I mean, anytime, it's, anytime you have a coach that shows up to your school and like, okay, I'm important. I'm important to these guys. I'm not just one of the 400 letters that gets sent out of, hey, we're watching you, signed by, hopefully you think it's the coach, maybe it's the GA. Like, you just don't know because they send so many. When a coach shows up to your school, and I'll always remember, Barney Cotton came and sat and watched me play basketball two years in a row. Coach Gilmore was one of the first ones that came up and talked to me. And then Coach Bo and Coach Cotton came to my house. Like, that meant so much to me and my family of where my mom and dad felt like they were sending their son and where I felt like I was going to find a father figure. And when you can look someone in the eye and shake their hands, it means so much. I'm, I'm curious to get your thoughts, um, you know, now with the bye week. Who, through this point of the season, has really kind of surprised you and impressed you both offense and defense? Yes, yeah, so, I mean, defensively, it's got to be Luke Reimer. I mean, you saw flashes of it last year, and then he had the ankle injury, and he wasn't right there, and you were like, okay, what is he going to be when he's the guy forever? And he's been very, very surprising to me in how well he's played. And you hear the coaches rave about him all the time. And then for me, the on offense, I, I know he's only played a few, but Nuri. Nuri's come in, and I think he's made a difference. Mm -hmm. I think that that spot was questionable for a long time, and you tried Piper, Hicks, and Bando, and Nuri's came in and really kind of calmed down the left guard spot, which has been good to see, and I hope that he takes that forward and keeps improving because he's still got a lot of improvement left in his game, but I think he's been a nice addition to this offensive line. All right, this is for both of you. We're, we're at the bye week for the Huskers. We've got about a month left in the season. Who wins the West? Mm. Let me just tell you, Iowa's three and one. They got to mm -hmm. buy this week. Purdue and Minnesota are both two and one. Purdue plays Wisconsin, who's one and two. That's a huge game. I'll be self scouting that because we play both those teams in the coming weeks. Who wins this division? Who, who do you like right now with a month, five weeks left in this thing? I, as much as it might pain me to say, if you look at the schedule, Minnesota actually could run the table here and finish the season at what eight and four nine and three somewhere in there and it's because you look at the schedule they don't have to play really on besides i think iowa is their the, next three games are maryland illinois northwestern yeah then they do go to they iowa. go to iowa. iowa november 13th yeah, so they get badgers at home yeah and so i mean if you look at it, it's like all they have to do is really not beat themselves and then beat iowa and i think everyone saw for the first time last week Iowa is human when they don't take the ball over three times a game. And so I think Iowa and Minnesota, for, for me, are the two, like that game, November, whatever you said that is, will be the deciding factor for the West. The day we're in November Madison, 13th. Yep. they play Iowa. Yeah, I, uh, I'm with them. I think maybe the only thing would be if... Gosh. <laughs> no, I, I no, I just like thinking about the fact that we should have beat Minnesota, right. and now we're sitting here exactly. going, Minnesota's going to win the West. Just is like, it, come it, on, it makes you mad. It yeah. does. It the, really does. The only thing is maybe if somewhere along the lines Minnesota gets another loss, and then we go in and take care of business over Iowa. Maybe this is a shakeup. I don't know if there's a tie. I don't know what the tiebreaker is, but a head-to-head. -head, I imagine probably the the betting favorite. Yeah, but they should have lost to Penn State. They should have two straight losses yes. right now because. They got beat up by Purdue, 24-7. Yeah. to 7. They still have to go to Camp Randall to play Wisconsin, mm -hmm. and they have to come here on Black Friday. Yeah. I think the easier slate is, is Minnesota. Minnesota. I would lean Minnesota. If I had to bet, I probably would stay with Iowa. But I Minnesota's got a real shot to win this thing. Yeah, Isn't they do, just schedule-wise, if you're looking at it. And they probably feel like they, you know, coming off that bye week and then the way they came out and performed, they, they, they were celebrating big time that win on Saturday. So they might take a lot of momentum moving Th this forward. This week with Purdue versus Wisconsin will be very telling of what this Purdue team is. 
can they stack good wins together, or did they Save sell your prediction out for tomorrow? Second, I, I, mean, I am, I am. But did they sell out so much against Iowa that they have a bit of a letdown against Wisconsin? Right, that's a question. It but is. You have to watch them. And if they put two really solid performances together, oh great! Now they're a really confident team. Walking, uh, we're walking into right. But I think that this week will be very telling what the Boilermakers look like the rest of the year. Minnesota has the tiebreaker over Purdue because they yes. beat them. Yes, yeah. they do. So the Gophers beat them. <laughs> it's crazy. It, it, uh, yeah, the Big Ten cannibalizes and, and themselves. Jessica, you and I, we we go back into August and we were saying you could pick about four different schools that could win the West. Yeah, and we were in that batch mm -hmm. too, even though we had the harder crossover games. We our path was a lot tougher. It still just is not right to me that some of the the crossover games count because there's just such a separation between the good teams and the bad teams that you know how is it fair that you know certain teams have to play all the good teams and certain teams get. I know. Uh, you know, a team every single year just to me doesn't make sense. It should only count within the division, in my opinion. After next year, because we get the easy crossover <laughs> games next year. So save that until 2023. <laughs> yeah, you look at it this year. We've, we're, we've played Michigan and Michigan State both in the top 10, and we still play the Buckeyes. They'll be in the top 10. Yep. That's a, a tough road to hold. But I'm with you, Jeremiah. It kind of scalds me when I start thinking Gophers might win, maybe playing in Indianapolis here in oh. early December. I just I can't believe it. That's not, I mean that's a solid Gopher team, but that's might be the worst Gopher team Flex had in the last three years. Imagine yeah. the lead up to the Big Ten championship if PJ Fleck and the Gophers are in it. You're going to be a miserable mm -hmm. human being. Yeah, there'll be a lot of a lot I, of rocking in a boat. I got to say I did enjoy Coach Frost's comment yesterday about he was asked to react to PJ Fleck's post game comment where Coach Fleck said the result on the field Saturday was culture over skill. And Scott Frost said, I just know our culture has come 100,000 miles. And he goes, and I think they have some pretty skilled players in Minnesota. Jeremiah's just yeah. shaking his head. I, I mean, I read that, and I was like, are you kidding? Like, is that, is that a joke? Well, first of all, Fleck just kind of, like, Through looked at his team like, yeah, you guys aren't that talented, but you play really hard, and I appreciate you guys. Like, no, I'm pretty sure Ottman Bell is going to play in the NFL. I'm pretty sure you got three or four dudes on that offensive line that are going to play in the NFL. Yeah. Mo Ibrahim probably was a first-round pick, so spare me. Spare me <laughs> your culture versus, like, spare me of that, please. I don't, I don't want any of that. Up, I don't want any of that. No, that, yeah, as soon as you that started fired me up. Shaking his head, that, I mean. That, I read that and I was like, "You got to be kidding me!" Yeah, <laughs> he, he, actually, some local riders in Minneapolis lit him up after that. Good. Thing, so, yeah. Hey, you got to you're gonna come back tomorrow? Yeah, we, I'll we be have here. some picking to yes, do. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> we, fired right? me up, man. We had some picking to do. Picking to do. Yeah. I mean, he normally wouldn't be that excited, but you just fired him up enough. Oh, that's <sighs> awesome. Hey, this season, share Valentino's tailgater tradition with our big red double jumbo deal and get two one-topping jumbo pizzas. For only seventeen seventy nine each, order yours online at Valentino's.com. Valentino's, the official pizza of the Huskers. Go Big Red. Phone lines are open for you, 402-413-2400. We're back with more of the show next. Experience the Woodhouse Lincoln difference today. We make it easy to find the right vehicle for you. Like the 2021 Lincoln Nautilus. Find comfort in the extreme with revitalizing interior features and a sculpted exterior design. Lincoln keeps you safe on your journey with Lincoln Copilot 360, a suite of safety features that come standard. Elevate your driving and shopping experience with Woodhouse Lincoln by visiting us at Woodhouse Place or online woodhouselincoln.net. Valley 365 is here, and the time is now to take your farming technology full circle. Valley 365 is the ultimate command center, the new single sign-on platform that brings together our tried and true technology and streamlines your entire operation. Combining the best features of AgSense, Valley Scheduling, Valley VRI, and Valley Insights, Valley 365 is the next-level solution for connected crop management. Leverage your data, make the most of your time, and own your tomorrow. Contact your Valley dealer today. Tailgating pros agree that Lucille's famous fried chicken and more at Sap Brothers scores big with Husker fans. Be the MVP of your tailgate party this year and let Lucille's do the cooking. Stop by Sap Brothers Travel Center or visit www.sapbros.net to find out how you can elevate your tailgate party with Lucille's famous fried chicken. Celebrating 50 years of fueling America's heartland and welcoming guests. Sap Brothers is proud to be an official sponsor of Husker Athletics. Whether you compete on the court, at the track, on the field, or in the fields, winning isn't just a goal. It's a mindset shaped, honed, and defined throughout the season. That's why farmers pushing themselves to be the best plant DeKalb brand corn. 
Wherever you compete, winning has roots. Perform at your best with Decal. Always read and follow grain marketing and all other stewardship practices and pesticide label directions. The name on the mailbox may say Smith, Myers, Baumgartner, or Johnson, but when you choose to plant with Rob Seco, it includes your name too, making you a stockholder in a company that's invested in you with a simplicity that makes us easy to do business with, relationships that bring more to the table, the technology, traits, and genetics that take on local conditions, and people with the know-how to use it. At Rob Seco, the only stockholder we listen to is you. From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, I'm journalism student Grace Fitzgibbon with Campus News. The Rural Fellows Program doubled their average number of participating students this year, putting UNL student interns to work in 17 Nebraska communities for the summer. Interns use their skills to get real-world experience on a variety of projects, from mapping out trail systems to creating promotional videos to researching and documenting local history. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. From sprains and stitches to sore throats and sinus infections. When it's care that can't wait, count on CHI Health Clinic Priority Care. Simply walk in seven days a week from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. You'll get the quality care you need without an appointment, and you'll never pay more than a regular primary care visit. Get in, get out, and get on with your day. Find a location near you at chihealth.com slash priority care. Inspired by the legendary coach Tom Osborne, Nebraska Athletics is proud to introduce the 255 Collection. With the mission to connect style with Nebraska pride, 255 was designed with the fan in mind. With high quality at the forefront, 255 can be worn anywhere, from sporting events and business meetings to backyard get-togethers. No matter the occasion, 255 is about feeling confident, looking good, and celebrating the remarkable coaching career of Tom Osborne. Shop now at Huskers.com or participating retailers. For more information, visit Huskers.com slash 255. You could win a 2021 Ford F-150 XL four-wheel drive Super Crew truck from the Woodhouse Auto family this season. If the Huskers return the first or second half opening kick for a touchdown, Woodhouse will give away an F-150. New contestants will be chosen each week. For details on how to enter the Woodhouse Auto Family Kickoff Contest and official rules, go to woodhousekickoff.com. That's woodhousekickoff.com. Walk these fields for 85 years. Grow deeper roots here. Know what thrives here. Bring in world-class genetics and innovative traits like chrome triple-stack corn hybrids and Enlist E3 soybeans. Refine it through pure local know-how and expertise. Do all of that, and the only thing left is the right seed. Hogemeyer. Learn more at therightseed.com. Here is a before winter to-do list from JTEC Construction. Let's start with windows. Triple pane window technology has saved homeowners countless dollars on heating and cooling bills. Siding serves a crucially important purpose, protecting your home and insulating it from adverse weather conditions. And don't forget about your roof. Designing your roof should be simple and painless, and JTEC offers several payment plan options. One more thing on your to-do list called JTEC Construction, the official exterior experts of the Huskers. Addy Sports Bar and Grill is the place to watch Nebraska games this season. Locally owned and operated, Addy's is Omaha's premier sports bar with four locations in Elkhorn, Maple Street, Millard, and the new flagship Capital location in downtown Omaha. If it's Husker game day, it's on at Addy's. Addy Sports Bar and Grill is Omaha's official watch party spot with game day giveaways, prizes, fun, and more surprises later in the season. Addy Sports Bar and Grill, see you there for the game. Visit a participating Agco dealer between now and November 12th to get yourself entered for a chance to win a pair of tickets to the Nebraska-Iowa football game on November 26th in Lincoln. That'll include some pregame tailgate passes. See participating Agco locations across Nebraska. You could be a winner this season. Phone lines wide open for you, 402-413-2400. The number to dot up with a comment or question. If you want to fire off a text, you can do the same thing. How about the question I posed, Jeremiah and Jessica? Who do you think is going to win this West with a little over a month to go in a season? It's wide open. 
particularly with Iowa losing last week, it kind of opened the door for everybody. Yeah, and I think everyone thought it was a done deal. Iowa was headed to the college football playoff, uh, potentially. But, yeah, that um, – totally opened things up and made things I think made people kind of question as I saw I saw JV is that JV in the bike <laughs> so I'm looking down and I see someone riding a bicycle behind me yeah, in the shot and I just I totally didn't know you, how did no, how'd you see that I was trying to not chuckle so, but I saw it in the camera shot down here so I was like what yep. is that bicycle yep, riding he's, he's riding his bike in here so <laughs> he's Right. Oh, anyways, totally lost my trade of that. But yeah, I think that I, that win or that loss for Iowa totally kind of made people reevaluate some of their sure. uh, thoughts on the Big Ten this year. They get the week off, so then you get uh, <laughs> Purdue, Wisconsin, and we're going to pick these games tomorrow. The pick segment's coming your way tomorrow. But Wisconsin, Purdue is going to be an interesting game this weekend. I'm going to soak that up because we play both of those teams. So really break into those two games when they get, when those two teams, when they play on Saturday, two o'clock is when that game is going on. I feel like there aren't many great games this weekend. Not a lot. Nationally, it's really skinny, right? Really skinny nationally. Here on our text line, uh, we got a text that says, give me Michigan, Minnesota in the Big Ten championship. So we talked about Minnesota, Michigan. So you're calling for an upset over Ohio State. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I don't know, but obviously we've heard all the talk about when is Harbaugh going to beat Ohio State. and you It know, is in Ann Arbor. I, don't, I mean, maybe, but the, I, I honestly think Michigan would be better suited to beat Ohio State when they weren't, when it wasn't as big of a game. You right. know what I mean? Like if it wasn't coming down to a top 10 matchup, both teams unbeaten, or Michigan unbeaten, Ohio State with one loss, it would be better if, I feel like I would give Michigan maybe more of a chance if they had, like, three losses, you yeah. know? I think if it's bad weather that day, that might really help Michigan because yeah. it might negate the speed of Ohio State. But that's a long way to, to go for that one. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm telling you, this West is wide open. I, I don't think Wisconsin can get back in it. They already have two losses. They still mathematically could. I just don't like their offense. They just can't score. Yeah, no, it's that I've been saying that since the start when everyone thought that they were going to win a national title. I just knew that they I mean, you got to be able to put points on the board. And it's it's not even just like, you know, a few points, because that's all that that Wisconsin defense needs. They can't put any points on the board. And then they they, when they turn it over, it's it's just a done deal because, you know, then that allows the other. So, yeah, I just I think that offense just has too many problems. Hey, our Sports Sunday hotline is brought to you by the Woodhouse Auto Family. Shop Woodhouse first, 18 brands, 16 convenient locations, simplified car buying to save you time. Shop, finance, and buy online at woodhouse.com. Want to give a shout-out to our great affiliate out in Lexington, KRVN. They brought their staff into Lincoln for a little field day. They went out and checked out the stadium. I think they were going to go ride one of those little uh, pedal the, things down in the Haymarket bike bar, tonight. right? Is that what it's called? I think so. I, I don't know those things. Yeah, I... Well... <laughs> Craig, <laughs> uh, they run around here on the stadium, or they ride they around do. here in the stadium I, a lot. I know they do. Um, but yeah, that that was awesome. And yeah. are, are the biggest affiliate, right? They carry the huge stick. Yeah, you can hear them in California. That that thing goes. And the longest, and, yeah, they were telling me yeah. about that too. Yeah, they're They've they're proud the Huskers of longer carrying than Husker sports for a long time. Fantastic. We really appreciate them. We can't do this if we don't have affiliates putting it out there for everybody to hear, so we appreciate them. Good to see a bunch of their staff and studio here earlier today. 402-413-2400. We'll take a break, come back, and wrap up our one and get you ready for the bike riding John Bader and John Cook. Maybe John Cook's going to come in here on a bike, too. We'll have to keep <laughs> an eye out for great. that. Just warn me next time. Well, remember, he <laughs> he talked to you about he likes to yes, take long does, bike yeah. rides. Yes, he does, yep. I, I mean, he very well could. <laughs> craziness this thing has gotten off the rails we're back to wrap it up next husker fans don't miss your chance to be in memorial stadium this season by purchasing a three-game football mini plan the three-game mini plan includes tickets to each of the three remaining home games versus purdue ohio state and iowa for only 195 tickets are only available while limited supplies last to get yours today, visit huskers.com slash tickets or call 402-472-3111. Walk these fields for 85 years. Grow deeper roots here. Know what thrives here. Bring in world-class genetics and innovative traits like chrome triple stack corn hybrids and enlist E3 soybeans. Refine it through pure local know-how and expertise. 
Do all of that, and the only thing left is the right seed. Hogemeyer. Learn more at therightseed.com. From vintage sneakers to bacon-scented soap to water fountains for your pet, all can be had with a few simple clicks. Problem is, you never really know what you're going to get until they show up at your door. Introducing Ford Blue Advantage. It's used car buying that's built for you. Not only can you shop for used vehicles online, in person, or both, you can also test drive before you buy, so you know exactly what you're getting. Plus, get history reports, vehicle inspections, Ford warranties, and the expertise of factory-trained techs. Visit FordBlueAdvantage.com today. Valley 365 is here, and the time is now to take your farming technology full circle. Valley 365 is the ultimate command center, the new single sign-on platform that brings together our tried and true technology and streamlines your entire operation. Combining the best features of AgSense, Valley Scheduling, Valley VRI, and Valley Insights, Valley 365 is the next-level solution for connected crop management. Leverage your data, make the most of your time, and own your tomorrow. Contact your Valley dealer today. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. At Jimmy John's, we don't make sandwiches. We make the sandwich of sandwiches. We use fresh veggies because we don't hate salads. We just feel bad for them. We make our sandwiches exactly how you want because you're the one who's eating it. And we bake bread all day, every day because stale bread isn't bread. It's croutons. Sandwich history is written by the victors. Good thing we have legible handwriting. Jimmy John's, the sandwich of sandwiches. Order pickup or delivery on the app. Score a game-winning drive when you buy your next vehicle at Sid Dillon Chevrolet. As a Chevrolet business elite dealer, we offer commercial vehicles, including medium-duty trucks and low-cab forwards. Whatever vehicle fits your needs, we're here to make the purchase process easy. Visit our Chevy locations in Blair, Crete, Fremont, or Wahoo. Plus, shop our full inventory at SidDillonChevy.com. You are what drives us, Sid Dillon. Chevy, find new roads. We're back inside of our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres Equipment. John Bader in the house, getting fired up for the volleyball hour. Coming yes. up in about 10 minutes, John Cook will be here to take your calls, questions, comments about Husker volleyball, the first place Huskers in the Big Ten Conference. First place. How about that? Acres Equipment is the uh, Nebraska's premier John Deere dealer, 27 locations across Nebraska and into Kansas. Acres Solutions for every field. Let's go to the phones. Pete and West Point joins us next. Good evening, Pete. Good evening. How you doing? Good, thanks. I guess my prediction is Nebraska or Wisconsin. We we are talking volleyball, right? <laughs> now we're talking football. <laughs> Who's going to win the West? They don't do divisions in volleyball. <laughs> I know. I was just being smart, Alec. I guess I guess I know who's not going to win the West. That's uh, Northwestern. I guess that's all I know. They are still at – actually, they're still mathematically alive. Nebraska's probably got the longest odds because of the losses we've suffered in the last two weeks. But, yeah, Northwestern doesn't really have much of a chance either. Who you yeah. like? Come well, on, Pete, pick, call. pick somebody for me. Who you got? Iowa, Minnesota, who you picking? I don't know if it's Iowa or Minnesota. I'm just going to probably puke. So, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It's been real disappointing. That Illinois loss really, really yeah. might have cost us a lot, you yeah. know. But we've always got next year, maybe. No doubt. Pete, we appreciate it. So. Thank you very much. Wisconsin, Nebraska. I got the Huskers in that thing. They're going to play next Wednesday night. Looking forward to that. Let's go to Gretna next. Eric, you're up on Sports Island. Good evening. Hi, Greg. I, I was um, listening to a, 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 a program on – earlier um another one they were talking about uh some of the some of the issues with uh, scott frost team or you know scott frost era and you know what you know if any with these losses they're you know everybody's calling for the different coaching staff all this stuff they made a lot of comparisons and they've made a lot of notes but one thing i haven't heard anybody talk about is you know i want to ask you this question too do you see any similarities between Scott Frost's team and his era and the Pelini era. Do you see anything notable between the two that you can compare? Hmm. And then I have some my, my own thought. If you well, don't, give me your thoughts because i I, I got to mull that over a little bit. I've never really thought of it in that context. So give me your thoughts, and I'll, I'll come up with something here. Well, if you remember the Pelini era, 
it seemed to me that the, that basically I, I was a Pelini fan. I like I love the guy. I really liked his coaching style. I didn't care about the, the anger management, all that stuff. But what he had, he had an answer. But the only thing he was missing was he didn't have a an offensive scheme or offensive strategy that worked. And I think that really all he needed to do was change his offensive coaches, maybe his coordinator. And I think he would have had it put together well enough to have gone over the hump. And I compare that to Scott Frost's team, and I see the same thing because I see those same types of games that we're losing. We're losing them for the same reason. We're making our own mistakes, and it's normally on the offensive side, and, and namely the offensive line. So I'm, I just see that similarity. Well, you remember Bo changed coordinators after a couple of years. He started with Sean Watson, and then after that 09 yeah. season where the defense was so good but the offense couldn't, he changed it to uh, Tim Beck. And so Tim Beck was his yeah. OC, and Nebraska went more with the spread, uh, more with the RPOs type of offense that you see now. So he did make a change. I yeah. think Scott, and Scott, was since he's more of an offensive-minded coach, Nebraska's issues more, to me at least, Eric, are in the red zone. And Jessica and I and Jeremiah were talking about this today. Nebraska is actually pretty good in total yards. They just struggle when they get close to the end zone. I mean, I think that's kind of what we've kind of detailed out. Yeah, the only Big Ten team that produces more total yards of offense is Ohio State, which their offense is crazy good, really, really good. But as far as moving the ball up and down the field, Nebraska is one of the best in the country. They just got to finish those drives. And one thing, Eric, and I appreciate the phone call. I need to get to the top of the hour here but I, you know both both teams would just kind of melt down in big games and and I don't know that we know enough this year at least for Scott's teams they haven't melted down against the Oklahomas or the Michigans they fat, battle those teams toe to toe and in times they could have melted down absolutely yeah right? there, going, there's a lot of teams it. that would have quit in times that this team has battled back absolutely where both teams just kind of and I think it's probably because Bo kind of lost his mind in a lot of those games and it just kind of got completely away from them Wisconsin a couple of different times that happened too we really haven't seen that with Scott in the last year plus but I, I get what you're what you're saying but you know Bo did change coordinators one time when he was the head coach and I thought the offense got a little bit better but interesting interesting comment interesting question buckle up put that phone down a reminder from the NDOT highway safety office we're gonna do the rest tonight got and you got some NBA on you got some NFL you gotta go watch NFL right although Baker's not playing for Cleveland tonight yeah I don't know I'm I'm also trying to I'm, I'm kind of in the zone on a couple of features so I might go uh I was working right before the show and kind of was on a on a thought process, so I might go uh, take my laptop home and work a little bit on some editing. But well, you're gonna listen to John and John. Absolutely, yes, <laughs> yes. There you, there you go. <laughs> After that, I will be figuring out what I'm going to do. We got we already got a text in for the for the volleyball coach. So you got wanna, lots of texts. They want to know what's happened to Lexi Sun. So that's probably your first question for the head coach. Tonight when he gets here. Hawaii <laughs> Hawaii Dave on our text line. Nebraska matches stats with Minnesota. Nebraska's calling it one of their worst games. Nebraska left 11 points in the field, even with a hurt Martinez. These close losses hurts more this year. They do hurt. Close losses hurt. They really do. Yeah, especially against, you know, when you watch what Nebraska's done against teams that are undefeated and top ranked top 10 in the country, and then you expect them to go win a game against a team like Minnesota. And so, yeah, it hurts really bad. Wanted to remind <laughs> you that the monthly podcast, Kicking Back with the Cooks, is now out. Check it out. Sponsored by Woodhouse. Shop Woodhouse first. 18 brands, 16 convenient locations. Simplified car buying to save you time. Shop finance and buy online at Woodhouse. Com. That'll put a wrap on our hour tonight. John Bader, John Cook coming up with the Husker Volleyball Show tomorrow night. Jeremiah makes a return uh, appearance. We'll have our pick segment. Kent Pavelka, Jake Muehlheisen will be here. We'll talk to Husker baseball coach Will Bull all tomorrow night. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Experience car buying your way with Woodhouse. Our team is ready to help you shop, finance, buy, and deliver your next vehicle your way. From the comfort of your home or one of our 17 dealerships, you're in the driver's seat with Woodhouse. Plus, with our selection, finding your next vehicle just got easier. From new to pre-owned, work trucks to third row SUVs, we've got something for everyone. Start shopping your way at Woodhouse.com or visit a Woodhouse dealership near you. 
Daddy Sports Bar and Grill is the place to watch Nebraska games this season. Locally owned and operated, Addie's is Omaha's premier sports bar with four locations in Elkhorn, Maple Street, Millard, and the new flagship Capital location in downtown Omaha. If it's Husker game day, it's on at Addie's. Addie's Sports Bar and Grill is Omaha's official watch party spot with game day giveaways, prizes, fun, and more surprises later in the season. Addie's Sports Bar and Grill. See you there for the game. Hey, Husker fans, if you're looking for an exciting new career as part of your pandemic recovery, Iowa has over 75,000 job openings in industries such as healthcare, advanced manufacturing, construction, IT, and ag. IowaWorks.gov has more information about job openings, earn while you learn apprenticeships, and exciting training and scholarship opportunities. Find your next great job in Iowa. They've got a solid game plan, a bright future, and want you on their team www.iowaworks.gov Sometimes being an office printer feels like I'm competing in an Olympic sport. Thankfully, I have Marco's managed print services on my team. Marco's game plan helps me make big plays while saving big bucks. And Marco's lightning fast tech support gets me back in the game fast. I'm up. Find out what your printers could be saying with Marco's managed print services at marconet.com
Live from the Acres Broadcast Center inside East Stadium, this is the Nebraska Volleyball Show. All the Huskers, all the time. Sports Nightly is presented by the NDOT Highway Safety Office, who reminds you to buckle up and put the phone down. Pass by Alexi Rodriguez, set in the middle. Kayla Caffey off the block and down. GHTB, get her the ball. Nebraska's up 17 13. Pass by Vander White, a beauty middle swing. One arm dig by Alexi Rodriguez. How did she get that up? Her left wrist, and then a right side roll shot, Krause. That's volleyball. Here's your host, John Baylor, on the Huskers Radio Network. Greetings, Nebraska. Welcome to your Nebraska Volleyball Show. Tuesday nights normally from 7 until 8. Hey, this week, Thursdays, 7 until 8. Why? Huskers were traveling Tuesday night. Last night played at Iowa. Three-set sweep over Iowa last night for the Big Red, but it was awfully close, 25-21, 25-22, and 26-24. Iowa looked a lot better than a two-win team. Huskers now have won nine in a row. That is the most consecutive since 2018 when the Big Red won 13 in a row. That's 10 sweeps for the season already, four sweeps in a row. Huskers go for their 11th home win of the season Saturday night, say hello to number seven, Purdue. The Big Red is 15, make it 14 and three. Hold everything. Uh, I guess uh, they are 15 and three and nine and zero oh in the conference, ready to take on Purdue, a team still smarting from last night's loss. They're going to be smarting for a long time. Michigan State, my goodness, barely recognizable. Takes down Purdue at Holloway Gym, West Lafayette, Indiana, in five, 15 to 10, set five. And Michigan State behind Nia Gross's 10 kills. She had 471. She looked like an All American last night. But Sarah Franklin, the super sophomore for the Spartans, 25 kills, hit almost 400. So Purdue comes in 14 and four, six and three in the conference, clinging for the moment to their number seven. Ranking, Caitlin Newton had 61 swings last night for Purdue. And she's just now taken off the ice wrap. The Big Red back at home. Saturday night, jam-packed of Annie, 8 p.m. You can join us tonight, 402-413-2400. 402-413-2400. My name's John Baylor. Here's the head coach of Nebraska Volleyball, John Cook. JB, how you doing? I'm okay. Greetings. How are you? Yeah. Doing good. Did you just Thursday night trying to adjust the schedule here? Nice. You, the great ones adjust. You like to say that. Yeah. And, and you believe it. You don't just say it. You you live it. <laughs> you you got to adjust. You think it's Tuesday. You show up here. There's nobody here. Yeah. I just, and then you I, come over Thursday. It's your night. I just want to talk about the football game this weekend, but there isn't one. So we're playing idle. Yeah, playing idle. And idle will try, <laughs> but uh, I don't think we're going to get an outcome. Yeah. And the other the other thing I hope for, since we moved the show to Thursday night this yep. week, that we get a call from a farmer on a combine out out harvesting because I think it's harvest season. But if they call now, Coach, they've got the big old light beams on. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. When you see them with the light, it's pretty cool during the day. But well, let's at see. night, yeah. yeah, you're right. Big old light beams, and they got the searchlights out there. So they got they got to make sure they got the combine right there between the rows, and it's perfect. And boom, and then they I don't know how they pull a 180, and then they come back the other direction. Yeah. Yeah, so I hope that happens. And yep. I read last week there was two combines caught on fire the same day, and I'm I'm like, how's a combine catch on fire? Did they run into each other? Combines are usually don't don't I mean, go I, very fast. Yeah, I know. It's, I think it was yeah. two separate things. I don't All know. Right. But it's a big state. You got a lot of combines yeah. out there. Some yeah. faulty engines. Yeah. Meanwhile, I'll ask Kaylin Meyer. She'll know. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah. She's majoring in ag engineering and ag economics. Kaylin Meyer. Both of them. So you know what her future is going to be. She wants to, she told me she wants to make tractors better. Really? So, yeah. Design tractors, improve them, you know, so. So Kaylin Meyer. Yeah, it's pretty, she's, I know she's got some really tough classes. I've seen her, I look at her, sometimes I'll walk up and down the plane and look at their, what they're studying. And I look at her and like, it looks like Chinese writing to me. Like, I, what, what, you know, what is all this stuff? Engineering. Yeah. Those engineers know a different language. Yeah. 
I mean, they can figure out, okay, how to keep this tall building from falling over. I mean, these guys know their stuff. Yeah. Bridges. Like, we want to make sure that a semi is not going to collapse this bridge. Yeah. They've got yeah. all the math. Yeah, it was, it's it's crazy. And uh, I remember that with Sydney Townsend, same thing. She was in oh, genetics pre-med. and microbiology and whatever. And I, I'd look at her books like, okay, who, Sydney who's was, making all this yeah. stuff up? And these professors, they got a lot of t- tough stuff they're throwing yeah. at yeah. some of these players. But Sydney was a little ticked off at our pregame last night. I asked Lauren, is this the best backcourt the Huskers have ever had? And I'm thinking Sidney Townsend, Annie Albright, Kenzie Maloney, Justine, not happy with the question. Yeah, well, depending on how you answer, there could be a brawl on this, this one. <laughs> yeah. Those guys could, might show up and say, let's go. <laughs> Tee but, it up. Let's go. Let's see who's the best. Annie and Sidney, they were uh, 17, 16 and 17. They could just communicate telepathically. Yeah, yeah, they, they, they did. They were roommates, very close, and... Yeah, we we talk about that, you know, compare, you know, comparing this group with that group. It's really, yeah, it's. I mean, they're both exceptional groups. Mm. So the backcourts, though. Yeah. Boy, I wish they gave Ani about two or three COVID years. She yeah. was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, uh, back to back to Kayla. Is Kaylin pretty close to finding the floor? I mean, you're right. She's she's, she's one of the brightest close. players. She's very close. Mm. She's she's doing a really good job. We 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 we're, we're actually talking about that after practice today. She she's she's getting better. She's doing a really good job. She just got to kind of wait for her time. Well, Lauren leaves after this yep. year. What about Kayla? Is she coming back? She could. She, I think potentially she could. And um, yeah, that whole Kayla, K- Callie, K- Nicklin. So. Th- I Kayla think all Caffey three of those guys could be a multi generational athlete, like by herself. Yeah. <laughs> Play in that. But here's a trivia question. Good. What what players played in three different conferences? What players? What all Nebraska time. all time. What Nebraska oh. player has played? This is a total oh, trivia question. It's a great question. What Nebraska player has played in three different conferences? Did she play for the Huskers? She played for the Huskers. Yeah, I'm not sure she ever got on the floor. Uh, she was an all American. Take it all back. <laughs> all righty. Let's see if, anybody, thinking, let's see the, if anybody calls in on that who one. Who's the player? I, I was putting together all the whatever happened to Husker, t- all-time Husker team, because we've had some great whatever happened tos. But she came from Colorado. She transferred to Kansas State for like a week and a half. Then she transferred to Florida State, went to Missouri, finished up at Colorado. She was like at five colleges. Yeah. yeah. That was Taylor Simpson. Taylor uh, Simpson. Yeah. Taylor Simpson. Okay. So I was thinking of, of her, but I'm not sure she ever saw the floor for Nebraska. No, she played a little bit okay. her freshman year. A little All bit. All-American who played in three. Oh, she played for the Huskers in two co- conferences. So she was 2010, 11, 12. JB, I can't believe you don't know this. Oh, my goodness. This is let's, embarrassing. Let's see if somebody calls Can we in. give away something? Do we have a gift certificate to Taco Bell or something? I'm already about, getting te- I'm already getting texts. People are texting, and they got they the got answer. It? Oh, yeah, they got it. We should give them, like, emeritus one-year life insurance policy or something. <laughs> Meredith, great sponsor of Nebraska volleyball. People are calling and they're all fired up. All right, before we go to uh, Mark, well, Mark's call, Mark's coming in on a combine. I say we yeah. just throw him right on. Okay, let's throw. Him right I'll on. tell you what. If you say you're calling on a combine, front of the line, and we're going to get a bunch Nebraska. of people pretending they're on a combine. He's in, at, from com- Combine, Nebraska. I mean, they could be in an apartment in like West Omaha, and they're calling. And, yeah, I'm on yeah. a combine. Yeah. How do? How can we check this stuff? <laughs> I mean, it's got to be a video call. You can hear the roar. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Here is. Have uh, him honk the horn. Mark, Western Nebraska. Great to have you, Mark. You're on the Nebraska Volleyball Show. Hi, how you doing? Good. Good. I didn't really have a question, but I heard the coach say that, and I just thought, well, I just as well call in because I'm going to come by and we're in Western Nebraska. Nice. Not, not way out west, the town. West, the town Western? There's a town yeah. named oh, Western. Oh, Western Nebraska. Wow, where is it? Yeah. It's about, do you know where Wilbur is? Wilbur's southwest of uh, Lincoln, not too far. Okay. Home of the Czech right. Festival. We're about, we're about 15 miles from there. You're a wow. suburb of Wilbur. Yeah. You, that does. So you guys, you guys like kolaches and, uh, sure. and, yes, we and, did. And, and are you driving red or green tractor? That's all I know. That's all the only question I have. Green. Green. Nice. So you got John Deere. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Sweet. Now, how far do the light beams go? How yeah. far can you see ahead right now? Well, Oh, 30 foot. Nice. 30 foot. How many hours you been on that thing today? Well, 
I just kind of got started this afternoon. So okay, all day. Okay. Are you chewing a little tobacco, or you're going uh, without any tonight? No. <laughs> Smart. All right. Good it, stuff. That Western. But you're a, you're a Husker volleyball fan, or were you just listen to the radio? A huge fan. Oh, yeah. he could have named the roster in '01. But uh, I had unfortunately I, we hung up on oh. Western Nebraska. I wonder where those kids. They must go to Wilbur, Claytonia. Yeah. Yeah. What Western? Western Nebraska. Let's go to uh, Mike from South Texas. I like this. This show just spans multiple uh, time zones. Hello, Mike. Great to have you on the Nebraska Volleyball Show. Gentlemen, good evening. How are you? Good. Great. Well, I was going to take a stab at, uh, yes, thank you uh, for taking the call. I was going to take a stab at Coach Cook's question that he posed. All right, go ahead. Somebody fairly close, somebody fairly close to him. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Who is it? Might be, uh, well, it might be that uh, Lauren Cook West. <laughs> nice work. You nailed it. Yeah, you nailed it. Somebody beat, beat you to it awesome. on text, but you called that's in, so that's official. Question. So She played in three uh, conferences. Yeah. Love the program. Love everything you do, Coach. Keep it up. All right. Thanks for listening. Thanks for the call. Boy, South Texas. The Internet's changed everything. Yeah. So let's, let's, let's review that. So yes. she started it in the Pac-12. Came to Nebraska. Yes. We were in the Big 12, and yes. then she was on the transition to the Big 10. 2011, our first year in the Big 10. And who won the champion, Big 10 championship that year? In 2011? Nebraska. Huskers. First year in the Big 10 won it. Uh, that, and that team, of course, that team, it took everything out of us to win the Big 10. And then, of course, K-State caught us in the second round and, and played great. Uh, but uh, I mean, that was, that was a great that was a great uh, championship, you know, to win our first year in, and you know, we know how tough it is. But uh, they did it, they did a great job. But it took a lot out of us. You were running out of gas at Northwestern. They yeah. shocked you there, the final right. game of the regular right. season. Yeah, we we were pretty much done. They gave you the trophy in the locker room after the loss. Yeah. How did that feel? Not very good. <laughs> Does it ever make you question the great emphasis you do place on winning the Big Ten? Um, well, it, 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 like I said, I think it's harder than winning a national championship. So, uh, national championship, six matches, three weeks. This is a grind for 10 weeks. And, you know, we're going to, we're coming up a stretch here. We're going to play four top 10 teams in a row or, or something like that. So it's, it, it, this is, you don't have to do that to win a national championship. You're not playing four top 10 teams in a row. You're playing maybe two, two to win it. All right, coach. I got a super hypothetical for you. Yeah. Let's say you coach four more years. Everyone hopes it's 14, but we'll just say it's four. You got a choice. Four Big Ten championships, no national championships, or zero Big Ten titles, two national championships. Do we need to go to Whoa, break? That's a, that's a tough question. Should we go question. to break? Can you need to ponder this one? I don't know. But, you know, four years, I mean, I'm hoping this guy in western Nebraska gives me a job on a combine. <laughs> be a lot less stressful. <laughs> he sounds calm. The Sports Nightly Highline is brought to you by Woodhouse Auto Family. Shop Woodhouse first. 18 brands, 16 locations, all convenient. Simplified car buying to save you time. Shop, finance, and buy online at woodhouse.com. And this one is brought to you by Acres Equipment. Acres Equipment, Nebraska's premier John Deere dealer. 27 locations across Nebraska and into Kansas. Acres, solutions for every field. More Nebraska volleyball show. Perhaps an answer to that question when we continue. You're listening to the HRN. If you're driven by an adventurous heart, you're in luck. The 2021 Subaru Outback shares your spirit. It will take you as far as you want to explore with standard symmetrical all-wheel drive. It'll get you off the beaten path with 8.7 inches of ground clearance, more than Toyota RAV4 or Honda Passport. It's the best Outback ever. The 2021 Subaru Outback. Go where love takes you. Comparison based on competitor information from manufacturer websites as of July 2020. Visit Beardmore Subaru in Bellevue or at BeardmoreSubaru.com. Welcome to Ag Answers, where we answer common questions related to farming and ranching. Today's topic, animal agriculture. There's been a lot of talk suggesting that giving up meat is good for the environment. However, livestock emissions only account for less than 4% of greenhouse gas emissions, according to the Environmental Protection Agency. Also, by reducing meat in your diet, you're missing out on all sorts of beneficial nutrients like protein, iron, and zinc. This message is brought to you by Nebraska's corn and soybean farmers. 
From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, I'm journalism student Grace Fitzgibbon with Campus News. UNL has been named one of the best schools for veterans for the fifth year in a row. The ranking on the Military Times Best for Vets survey reflects the hard work of Nebraska's Military and Veteran Success Center, serving military dependents, veterans, National Guard members, active duty troops, and many Husker students in the reserves. Hello, I'm Tom Osborne. And I'm Coach Frost. Statistics prove that youth who are mentored and receive support and guidance from a caring adult show measurable improvement in academic achievement, motivation to succeed, and hope. Over the past 30 years, teammates have served more than 43,000 youth. And right now, there are more than 1,000 waiting for a teammate's mentor to visit with them once a week in school. For more information on how you can help the Teammates Mentoring Program, please go to teammates.org. And thank you for supporting our youth. Sponsored by Nebraska Crossing Fast Cash App. Both farmers and Division I athletes are alike in that every season presents a new opportunity. Aurora Cooperative does what they always do, which is lean into every new opportunity. They focus on their roots and continue to stay tougher together with their farmer owners. These core beliefs are much like those of committed Husker athletes. Aurora Cooperative leans on their values of a strong work ethic to get any job done for their producers. Aurora Cooperative, tougher together. Preparation is the key to success on game day. And like your favorite Huskers on the field, you need to be ready right from the opening kickoff. Senex has your pregame routine covered. We've got your salty snacks, your sweet treats, ice cold beverages to wash them down and fresh tanks of propane to fire up the grill. Fuel your fandom at your local Senex station. Husker pride, powered locally. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Lutz is an integrated business solutions firm born and raised in Nebraska with offices in Omaha, Lincoln, Hastings, and Grand Island. Lutz provides expert accounting, consulting, financial, technology, M&A, and talent solutions tailored to you. Lutz embraces your business as their own to discover the right solutions to help you thrive. They mind what matters for businesses or individuals seeking a partner to help energize and heighten financial and organizational success. Visit Lutz.us slash GBR. Addy Sports Bar and Grill is the place to watch Nebraska games this season. Locally owned and operated, Addy's is Omaha's premier sports bar with four locations in Elkhorn, Maple Street, Millard, and the new flagship Capital location in downtown Omaha. If it's Husker game day, it's on at Addy's. Addy Sports Bar and Grill is Omaha's official watch party spot with game day giveaways, prizes, fun, and more surprises later in the season. Addy Sports Bar and Grill. See you there for the game. From vintage sneakers to bacon scented soap to water fountains for your pet, all can be had with a few simple clicks. Problem is, you never really know what you're going to get until they show up at your door. Introducing Ford Blue Advantage. It's used car buying that's built for you. Not only can you shop for used vehicles online, in person, or both, you can also test drive before you buy, so you know exactly what you're getting. Plus, get history reports, vehicle inspections, Ford warranties, and the expertise of factory trained techs. Visit FordBlueAdvantage.com today. Hey, Husker fans, if you're looking for an exciting new career as part of your pandemic recovery, Iowa has over 75,000 job openings in industries such as healthcare, advanced manufacturing, construction, IT, and ag. IowaWorks.gov has more information about job openings, earn while you learn apprenticeships, and exciting training and scholarship opportunities. Find your next great job in Iowa. They've got a solid game plan, a bright future, and want you on their team www.iowaworks.gov Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker Athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall and Zone 6 in Exarbon Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Row townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red. Addy 
Sports Bar and Grill is the place to watch Nebraska games this season. Locally owned and operated, Addie's is Omaha's premier sports bar with four locations in Elkhorn, Maple Street, Millard, and the new flagship Capital location in downtown Omaha. If it's Husker game day, it's on at Addie's. Addie's Sports Bar and Grill is Omaha's official watch party spot with game day giveaways, prizes, fun, and more surprises later in the season. Addie's Sports Bar and Grill. See you there for the game. Welcome back to your Nebraska Volleyball Show. I'm John Baylor with the head coach, John Cook. 15-3, and 9-0, and 0, 9 consecutive. But it gets a lot more rugged. Number 7, Purdue. Saturday night, 8 o'clock at the Devaney. Same time a week from last night, next Wednesday night, Wisconsin, number 3 in the land. And then a week from Saturday at Minnesota, number 12. And then at Illinois, then at Ohio State, their top five. Basically, four of the next five are against top 12 opponents, and seven of the next 11 are against ranked opponents. And the lowest-ranked team is Penn State. Penn State, number 14. So seven of the next 11 opponents are number 14 or better. 402-413-2400. It's going to get rugged. Meanwhile, Coach, my guess is right now you are searching. You are searching for something that's really vital for success deep into December. The only team I can think of, and there may have been others, that without two, not one, but two effective outside hitters who could really terminate was the 2017 Florida Gators. They did not have a second outside who could effectively, reliably terminate, but every other great championship team has has two great outsides. I mean, and and the, the one that you know epitomizes it is Kate Cernich, 20 the 1995 Huskers. She gets 20 kills in the championship match. You have to have that second great outside. Is that the primary search right now for the Huskers? Got to find that second great reliable outside terminator. Well, you know, I think it depends on the night and. Uh... But, you know, to be balanced, we're, we're going to find out in the, you know, the next couple of weeks here who, who can step up. So, uh, and, you know, we've had some um, people already step up uh, at times. So the thing is, can we do it consistently but against a bunch of great teams? So uh, I, I think uh, we've got a lot of players that want to try to prove it. And, you know, we'll see. How do Ali Bate Norris and Lexi Sun look against the Huskers in practice? Depends on the day. <laughs> Depends now, on the day. One highly talented, very promising talent that you also have there to choose from is Whitney Lawnstein. Yeah, don't count out Whitney. Yeah, and she, she's got a cannon. That's right. You're not sure where it's going. Yeah. I mean, the great thing about Whitney is if she's playing, you got to stay off your phones in the crowd because yeah. you don't know where that ball's going. <laughs> she, yeah. she, and it's coming full speed. Yeah. And that's fun to watch, but is, is she too error prone at, at this point for you to be able to throw her there full time or, or not or not really she's ready to go yeah no she's she's very close uh we we've talked about it you know we train her on both the left and the right and trying to figure out where her best spot is but that's holding her back is just the consistency uh, of being consistent every day and being a uh, low air and um but she's working really hard and man she's fun to coach really she's she just wants to play she, she's, she's just great to coach. She's a great learner. She uh, is, a, is a talent. Uh, it's just, you know, she hasn't had a hot, lot of high-level experience. You know, she missed a year of club. Uh, she started late. She, you know, played high school volleyball at Waverly, uh, which they had a couple nice teams there. Uh, but, um, you know, COVID really messed up. You know, she was a former middle who moved to the outside. So COVID you know, really took a year away from her playing club at a high level because she would have been on a really good club team uh, out of the VCM program. And so it's just, it just takes time, you know. She reminds me a lot like of a Christina Hotelling, you know. They mm -hmm. just, first year, they're, they're just all over the place. They're trying to figure things out, but look out. National player of the year. Yeah. Eventually. Yeah. Cambridge is one of those towns where the ratio of national players of the year to streetlights is one to zero. Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, Whitney is it is it it's more hypothetically speaking it's riskier to put somebody on the left than on the right. Correct? Cuz the left gets so many more swings, big swings. Right. You know, in a long rally. Whereas on the right you typically only get it in system. Furthermore, the right side you don't have to pass. So, 
if you were well, to think about on, Whitney. It depends on the year. You know, we had Kitty Ralston pass as a right side. Uh, Jazz did not. Uh, the most famous right side player ever here, Angie Oxley, the stealth, passed all six right. rotations. I mean, we designed that system for her because she was a great passer. So we wanted her to pass all six rotations. So we put her at opposite, which is easy to get her in all six rotations. So, um, so it just depends, you know, on, on what they, what their skill set is. But, um, but, yeah. But if she were to go to the right side, then presumably then Lindsey Krause may move. Is that just too many moving pieces this late in the season? Oh, you know, we're, we're always open to everything. But, you know, right now we, we, we got a lineup we like. We're, they're playing hard. Um, we've played at really high level at times uh, and um, been pretty consistent. So th that group is, uh, you know, I, I think they've done a pretty nice job. But, again, our, there's some big tests coming up here. And um, this will be a really good experience for us. And it's also going to be fun for our fans because there's going to be some great matches in the, in the Devaney and uh, they need to, they'll need to crank it up. Coach, i got to ask you a question on the mind of so many Husker fans and really volleyball fans across the country. Lexi Sun, two-time third-team All-American, two-time first-team All-Big Ten, and last night she, she hits zero. She had no kills. I mean, it's not like she had five kills and five errors. That actually was Allie Batenhorst. She had no kills in a, in a full set with a fair number of swings. I think she had five swings. What can you tell us about her set? Is she 100% healthy? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's just it's hard coming off the bench, um, one and uh, you know, two. She just she hasn't really found her rhythm yet, and uh, um, you know those guys, you know, competed for a long time, and and Allie's was better, and so um, but we're, you know Lexi rotates in there, and we're keeping her in there because at some point we're probably going to need her. How about defense, and then passing, uh, Allie versus Lexi. Well, neither right now. Kenzie Knuckles is is taking their spot in the back row. So, uh, and, and she's played exceptional at times. I mean, she won a game for us last night serving. I mean, she. I think it was game two. It was really tight, and she went back there and just served an ace. They, you know, served another ball, called a timeout. I think got another ace or shank off the next serve. I mean, she just we call it snowball. She had a got a snowball for us and. Broke it open. We got up by five points, and then went from there. So, um, Kenzie's Kenzie's had a big impact, and we know she's a great defensive player. How about blocking, Allie versus Lexi? Um, yeah, they're they're both good in their own ways. You know, um, Lexi's going to get the more spectacular block. Allie's going to be get touch a lot of balls, slow a lot of hitters down. Is Kenzie enjoying her current role more I, than she was playing all the time as libero? I think so. Really? Yeah. I think she loves it. Half time. Because she gets to hit, man. <laughs> yeah. I mean, she's hitting almost 160 just out of the back row. Yeah. I mean, translated, I mean, that's like hitting what, 260 in the front row or two? I mean, that's tough well, to do. Well, it depends. I mean, we, we're, we're hitting pretty high out of the back row overall. Uh, you know, but you gotta, if you're going to set it, you got to be efficient at it or it's not worth setting. But she you know a lot of the sets she gets are they're they're kind of outlets and it's not in system as we say so she's just got to manufacture find a way to get a kill or put it on the other team and make them have to earn it coming back and she's she's just really good at that the back row hitters constantly target back left to me because they they can see the whole floor and typically their blockers in front of them so they got to angle it right or left and you usually aim it towards your left towards the left so the setter on the other team has to has to dig well, it'd be to to our yeah to our left yeah and r at right back. That's that's always the prime option. Sometimes the set makes it hard to get it there, or if they see the block, they'll go the other way. But uh, you know, assuming a setter's there at least half the time, you got a chance that the setter will play it. Makes it a little bit tougher to transition back on us. But again, moving it, hitting shots, trying to tool the block. You know, and like last night, I I think she got a. Touch, touch off the block, you know, she just greased it and got a, got a kill off of it. So, uh, yeah, she's a, she's a great hitter. I mean, she, we, we let, you know, we're letting her hit a little bit in practice and, you know, she gets in hitting lines and, man, she's, she's an explosive, dynamic athlete. How often have you seen this Husker team uh, play in a manner that you think, wow, I've got a great team? 
Great. Uh, there, Michigan, there's Illinois. Been, there's been times where, you know, um, but to be where we are right now in, in the Big Ten, I mean, we, we've played, uh, we've lost three in a row, and we've turned it around. But like I said, you know, it's, it's still a long Big Ten season, and we got some, you know, I think three top ten teams in a row the next three matches. Purdue on Saturday and Wisconsin on Wednesday night. Boy, the Devaney's going to be hopping for the next two home matches. Nebraska 811 says, go dig red before you dig. Always call or click 811 to have your utility lines marked. It's free. It's easy. It's the law. And buckle up and put down the phone. A reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. More Nebraska Volleyball Show. After you hear this, you're listening to the HRM. It's football season. Husker Nation and Famous Dave's is here to make your tailgate, house party, or get-together famous. Award-winning and house-smoked St. Louis-style ribs, Texas beef brisket, Georgia chopped pork, and house-made sides like our Wilbur beans, creamy coleslaw, and Dave's cheesy mac and cheese will surely tackle any barbecue craving. Visit FamousDave's.com for all your catering and online ordering needs or come visit us at our locations in Lincoln and Bellevue. You always dreamed of owning your own farm. Now you're living your dream, and it's time to pick the tractor that makes it all come together. Massey Ferguson has reinvented what compact and utility tractors can be and redefined what they do, making them easier to operate, more comfortable to drive, more versatile than ever. Massey Ferguson gives Nebraska farmers the power and performance to win in the field. Manzer Equipment in Osmond, Nebraska, your full-time Massey Ferguson dealer. Proud supporters of the Huskers and Nebraska farmers since 1975. Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall and Zone 6 in Exarban Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Road townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red. What is highbid.com? It's the online auction site for just about everything under the sun. Art and antiques, cars and coins, office equipment and furniture, toys and tools. You can find it all at highbid.com. Highbid.com gives you access to thousands of auctions across the USA and around the world. Browse the most popular auctions, search for the exact item you want, or just explore the site. Go to highbid.com, that's H-I-B-I-D.com, and find what you're looking for today. Let Shelter Insurance get you in the game this football season. The Nebraska Huskers are gearing up for another big year, and this is your chance to win tickets from Shelter Insurance and the Husker Radio Network. Contact a Nebraska Shelter agent and they'll register you for a chance to win tickets to one of four home football games this season. Only shelter agents can register you, so call, email, or drop by for your chance to win. Find an agent near you at shelterinsurance.com slash huskers and ask them to register you to win. You trained for this all year. Endless hours of cardio, conditioning, and weights. And now you are ready. Ready to trek back to your seat from the concession stand. Through the lines, lost fans, and that mascot who wants you to do a little dancey dance, all without spilling a drop of your ice cold Bud Light. Welcome back to football, sports fans. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. It's game on at Sid Dillon Buick GMC Cadillac in Fremont, featuring our winning combination of Buick SUVs and GMC trucks and SUVs. And as a GMC Business Elite dealer, we offer commercial vehicles for your business needs. For the convenient and easy way to shop for your next vehicle, just visit our Fremont location or check out our full inventory at SidDillonBuickGMC.com. You are what drives us, Sid Dillon. We are professional grade. Much like the values of the people of Nebraska, Nebraska Realty was built on the principles of hard work, dedication, and doing things the right way. They believe strongly in the power of creating lasting relationships and the value those relationships hold. Their success is based on trust and the relationships created with the people and communities they serve across the state of Nebraska. There really is no place like Nebraska Realty. 
Today's play of the day comes from Nebraska. We pick it up with the local sports announcer at a Nebraska lottery retailer. Dave enters the store. He makes a move to the checkout counter. Looks like he's going to pass. Yes, he's passing the clerk a few dollars. The clerk takes the handoff and spins around. It looks like he's placed the scratch tickets on the counter. And now Dave has them in his hand. It's the old scratch Scratcherowski. He scratches left. He scratches right. Oh, my. He's done it. Dave has scored a bundle of cash. Play is good. Go play. Odds vary by game. Husker fans, don't miss your chance to be in Memorial Stadium this season by purchasing a three-game football mini plan. The three-game mini plan includes tickets to each of the three remaining home games versus Purdue, Ohio State, and Iowa for only $195. Tickets are only available while limited supplies last. To get yours today, visit huskers.com slash tickets or call 402-472-3111. If you're driven by an adventurous heart, you're in luck. The 2021 Subaru Outback shares your spirit. It will take you as far as you want to explore with standard symmetrical all-wheel drive. It'll get you off the beaten path with 8.7 inches of ground clearance, more than Toyota RAV4 or Honda Passport. It's the best Outback ever. The 2021 Subaru Outback. Go where love takes you. Comparison based on competitor information for manufacturer websites as of July 2020. Visit Beardmore Subaru in Bellevue or at BeardmoreSubaru.com. Hello, I'm Tom Osborne. And I'm Coach Frost. Statistics prove that youth who are mentored and receive support and guidance from a caring adult show measurable improvement in academic achievement, motivation to succeed, and hope. Over the past 30 years, Teammates has served more than 43,000 youth. And right now, there are more than 1,000 waiting for a Teammates mentor to visit with them once a week in school. For more information on how you can help the Teammates Mentoring Program, please go to teammates.org and thank you for supporting our youth. Sponsored by Nebraska Crossing Fast Cash App. Your Nebraska Volleyball Show, special Thursday night edition, 7 until 8 tonight. Normally Tuesday, 7 until 8. That's the time next week. That Nebraska Volleyball Show will come between Purdue, number 7, on Saturday, and then number 3, Wisconsin, on Wednesday, followed by number 12, Minnesota, on the road the following Saturday. Good fun with Nebraska Volleyball. There's the head coach, John Cook, my name. John Baylor, Acres Equipment, Nebraska's premier John Deere dealer, has 27 locations across Nebraska and into Kansas Acres solutions for every field. Did you recognize that Michigan State team that beat your next opponent, Purdue, uh, last GB, night? I haven't watched him yet. As soon as you know, I get finished with this show, I'll start watching that match. Um, Amazing. But, you know, remember when we played them, we said Franklin was the key. We held her to five kills. And they got her. She got 25 last night. I mean, she's she's that kind of player that can go off like that. And um, so every, I mean, look at Iowa last night. Iowa played. I mean, have you just seen them the, the match before against Northwestern? I mean, I, I think our players were watching the video. You know, we're showing a video, and they're like, they were bored. You know, <laughs> and then they come out and play great last night. Yeah. I mean, they were. I mean, um, buzzsaw. We call her. Yeah. I mean, she made some great swings last night. I'll be curious what she's going to do. I mean, she could be a really nice pro player because she can do everything. Six, know, four, six, four yeah. sets, six, right side, five. back row, plays left side this year. I know. I'll be curious. I don't know if she has another year or not. You know, it's me to see who all comes back next year. But, um, man, she could be a really nice pro player. Uh, I mean, she's a really – she would fit the European system really well. Courtney Bazario, buzzsaw. Her older sister played for Iowa as well, but we may not see her again, but perhaps she'll be back uh, in the fall. Boy, they did look awfully good. I mean, everyone just has another gear in this conference, but sometimes we don't see it. Like Illinois right. did not look like Illinois. Well, I think part of that is what we, we, Indiana? we pressured them yep. and, and Indiana, and it um, depends on the night. But if you don't, if you don't have your A game, you're, you're, you, you know, you're going to struggle. Yeah, I don't care how, you know, if you're at the top of the conference, bottom of the conference, you've got to have your A game every night. And when you think about Nebraska's great defense this year, you think blocking and, and digging. You really should be thinking about serving. And last yeah. night the serving was not quite as effective. Well, we end up with eight aces, eight errors, but we, we did not come out serving tough. And Iowa, I thought, served way tougher. I mean, we were on the ground almost on every pass. I mean, we made some great saves. And my theory is, and I was telling the players this, so that arena is it's over ice. It's a hockey arena that we played in last night. Okay, if you 
you know, and I stretched our team out in our pregame practice, and you're down on the floor. I mean, the floor is Chilly. feels like a refrigerator. <laughs> Seriously. I mean, it is cold. <laughs> so there's, a, there's like a cold layer of air in there, and the ball, because of, you know, this is what you learn flying airplanes. I've talked about this before. The colder the air, the more lift there is for airplanes. The hotter it is. Like if you take off from Phoenix and it's 110, I mean, they got longer runways down there because it takes so long to get the plane up. If it's zero degrees here, you, uh, you know, you're going to take off and you're going to be up in the air so fast just because the molecules are tighter. Well, the same thing as the volleyball is going through the air, it, it's going to move more when it's colder. And they kept serving these balls that were just dropping like rocks. And, I mean, several times we're like laid out diving to pop these balls up. Well, they're in that gym a lot, and they're used to it, but it, it's a cold, it, I mean, it was a cold gym uh, along the floor level. So and the balls fell faster or oh, just, yeah. just they moved were, differently? They were, I mean, we were creeping up, and they were still falling in front of us. So um, it's just, it's, it's cold because it's over ice. And... You know, I, I guess the first week they played in there, this is the first time they've had played over the ice, and they had all kinds of condensation problems and water dripping, and the floor was wet. So uh, they, they had to make some adjustments and get it figured out. 402-413-2400. People like to communicate via text. Here's a question for you. Do you think there should be a maximum number of games that a volleyball athlete should be allowed to play during the season without losing a year of eligibility, akin to the four-game maximum in football? Yeah, I don't know about that. Um, you know, it's a good question. I mean, they're probably, since the other sports, football ha football is really the only one I think that has it. So, um, you know, and they play a lot of guys, uh, you know, and they can get those guys in there. I think it's, a, yeah, it's an interesting rule for football, you know. But I, none of the other sports really have it. I mean, you play one play, you lose your red shirt year. Do you think that's so, fair? I, th I think it's fair. I mean, um, you know, if you're going to play, play. And if you're not going to play, then try to redshirt. I mean, it would create a bit of a logjam in these sports with fewer players. Right. And that, that might be a financial thing, you know, or a recruiting thing, you know, because, again, we recruit so far out, or at least we used to. It's shortening up now. But all of a sudden you redshirt somebody. Well, what, what about that ninth grader that just committed? Now, now that's going to cause a logjam. So we kind of know going in who we want to redshirt and who we don't want to redshirt. And, um, and we used to try to redshirt a lot and have a plan for that. But I think as time's gone on and with the portal and everything, I'm not sure redshirting is a great idea because somebody sits a couple of years, they're going to get antsy and get in the portal. <laughs> so uh, I think now it's, I think there's going to be way less redshirting. And with COVID, you'll have a choice between, okay, giving, you only have 12 scholarships, giving that scholarship to the freshman as you intended, or to a COVID senior wants to stick around an extra year. And have you seen any coaches say, you know what, we're going to give to the senior and, you know, ninth grader, now 12th grader, even though we promised you four years ago, we want you, but the first year's on you? There's coaches that cut kids uh, that were committed uh, because they were going to reward their seniors, which would be next year, keeping them in the program. Or, you know, I, I'm, I'm not, let me back up there, not seniors, but juniors, sophomores who are going to eventually be seniors and keeping them in. So we've, I've seen, I've heard of coaches, a limit, you know, saying, hey, we don't have a scholarship for you. And this is all before letter of intent signing day, sure, which but, is in November. But there's but, been a verbal commitment both ways right, for years. But they've cut them loose because they're going to stay with the older kids. Mm. Uh, we're not doing that. We're, we're committed to our recruits and staying with it. You think this is a great opportunity for mid-majors? Pick up some top talent oh, yeah. that falls away. Yep, yep. Suddenly available on the open market. Yeah. Well, like, uh, um, you know, a lot, a lot of players. Like, I'll give you Kylie DeBerg, who played at Missouri. You know, she went to LSU. She's going to play beach her senior year, but they talked her into playing indoor. So she's playing indoor, and she's going to go in their beach program, which is a, you know, a top beach program, mm. one of the top, top, top five beach programs. So, but that's what she wants to do with her extra covid fifth year so everybody's got kind of different things they're doing but we get uh, a lot of them will go beach and try that some of them will just go um, i'm trying to think uh uh bukovic from ohio state's already in the portal i mean she lit us up last year she's not playing this year but she's in the portal so she's going to go fifth year somewhere whether it's beach or just try another program mm. or go get a master's
Now you heard Coach Frost say that he's going to lean more on portal players who can be high impact and less on 18 year olds. Do you yeah. anticipate something like that happening to a greater degree in volleyball? Well, it's it's already happening. So, but so fewer commits with the sophomores and juniors and, and seniors in high school and waiting for someone to become available. Yeah, uh, I mean, there's uh, there's coaches now that are just going to recruit. The, I mean, they're just going to the do the portal. Forget recruiting freshmen or high school kids. Just just live in, live with the portal. Is there enough talent in the portal? I we'll see. I mean, there's a lot of players this year. We I mean, we'll have to see how it goes, but. You know, us, you're going to have to keep players happy, and we're going to have to recruit players, you know, every year, every month, to, uh, every day, just to keep them in this program and keep them believing, and, and because it's a, it's a free for all. You got to keep selling your players after they arrive on campus. You Absolutely, gotta... and you and, you know, I think one of the great things, like we talked about, Kayla Meyer, Kayla Meyer comes from a farm town, family of farmers, athlete, parent, you know. Uh, Five siblings. Yeah, and her parents were athletes. I mean, she understands it, it, it's a process. It takes time, you, you know, but a lot of kids these days yeah. don't. We're, She'll in, be we're in the instant instant gratification world, you know. And, and you, again, you're seeing it everywhere. I mean, the numbers in the portal are, are unbelievable by sports. I mean, over 1,500 volleyball players and more football and basket, 1,500 basketball. It should just be a portal league. Yeah. Just set up an East West <laughs> Portal League. That's a great idea. It's a volleyball nomad Portal League. Yeah. Stay right there, more Nebraska Volleyball Show after this. While some seed companies put a greater stake in stock prices and anonymous shareholders, Rob Seco knows that what's important to you hits closer to home. That's why you'll find we're focused on your needs. With a simplicity that makes us easy to do business with, a relationship that makes it easy to connect with anyone in the company and the technology, traits, and genetics you need from any source. Put your stock in the company that puts you first. Rob Seco. Today's Play of the Day comes from Nebraska. We pick it up with the local sports announcer at a Nebraska Lottery retailer. Dave enters the store. He makes a move to the checkout counter. Looks like he's going to pass. Yes, he's passing the clerk a few dollars. The clerk takes the handoff and spins around. It looks like he's placed the scratch tickets on the counter, and now Dave has them in his hand. It's the old scratch -Aruski. He scratches left. He scratches right. Oh, my. He's done it. Dave has scored a bundle of cash. Play is good. Go play. Odds vary by game. There's a call on the field for a quality seed specific to where you farm. Make the right call with Prairie Valley. With local research in eight regions throughout Nebraska, Prairie Valley performs with their locally specific hybrids and varieties while achieving the highest quality and yield. No matter where you farm in Nebraska, Prairie Valley has the seed for where you are. Find a local dealer and learn more about the seed for where you are at prairievalleyseeds.com. Successful farmers must make good decisions every day. In pivot irrigation, the choice is simple. TNL exclusive hydraulically powered pivot irrigation systems are like no other. You get tough, reliable, and cost effective irrigation. Let TNL's 60 years of irrigation experience work for you. Call your local TNL dealer or TNL irrigation company today. TNL, like no other. Welcome to Ag Answers. Today we're talking about renewable biofuels like corn ethanol and soy biodiesel. Electric vehicles continue to make headlines as we look for ways to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. But did you know by using ethanol, you can reduce greenhouse gas emissions by up to 46% compared to traditional gasoline and by up to 86% when you use biodiesel compared to petroleum diesel? Locally produced biofuels are the here and now solution to combating climate change. They are good for our air, good for our wallets, and good for Nebraska. This message is brought to you by Nebraska's corn and soybean farmers. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. It's football season. Husker Nation and Famous Dave's is here to make your tailgate, house party, or get-together famous. Award-winning and house-smoked St. Louis-style ribs, Texas beef brisket, Georgia chopped pork, and house-made sides like our Wilbur beans, creamy coleslaw, and Dave's Cheesy Mac and Cheese will surely tackle any barbecue craving. Visit FamousDave's.com for all your catering and online ordering needs, or come visit us at our locations in Lincoln and Bellevue.
Welcome to Ag Answers, where we answer common questions related to farming and ranching. Today we're tackling the issue of GMOs, or genetically modified organisms. GMOs may sound scary, but they're actually benefiting our environment and consumers. That's because GMO crops help solve specific problems like insects, food waste, and droughts. By selecting good traits from one plant or organism and adding them to another, farmers are safely using science to produce high-quality foods better than ever before. This message is brought to you by Nebraska's Corn and Soybean Farmers. Nebraska Volleyball Shows is Combine Thursday. You're on a combine, you get to the front of the line like Dave. Hello, Dave. Great to have you on the Nebraska Volleyball Show with the head coach, John Cook. Hello, Good evening, Dave. Coach Cook. I'm here. Great, hey, Dave. I just wanted to really call in and give equal opportunity to farmers in red combines. Okay. Nice. Massey Ferguson? <laughs> It's a case. It's a case. Oh, yes. okay. J.I. Case. Uh, love it. Love it. I, I, appreciate, I appreciate your show. I just enjoy listening to you. Coach Cook, good luck to you on the rest of the season. Thanks. What are you harvesting tonight? I'm harvesting corn. Okay. Nice. Seed corn or cattle corn or ethanol corn? You'd call it cattle and ethanol corn. Okay. What states have the best corn? Let's go three, two, number one. Well, you have to start with Nebraska, of course. Right. Do the other states even matter after that? Good point. Excellent. <laughs> well handled. Good Thanks, call. Dave. What? Uh, uh, let me ask you, uh, how long have you been farming for? I just said goodbye. Oh, sorry, so Coach. Okay. Sorry about that. I love talking to farmers. They, they, they're, they're, the, they're just the greatest people. Let's go farming with John Cook Thursday yeah. night, 7 well, until 8. JB, this, this in May, I, I spoke at out west, up oh, north. Yeah. Um, and um, Logan View. I hope all you don't to, have a gas guzzler. All the farmers. Yeah. I mean, it was, farm, it was the seed guys, the farmers, the, everybody comes in. I mean, it, it's just, it, it's awesome. And they're just, they're the greatest people. And I just, I love how, so we went up, I, I can't remember that it was some small town where, by where Kelsey Fien lives. And we went up there, the, it was Dodge. farm. Do, yeah, Dodge. Powell's. Yeah, yeah it's one of those towns. Yep. I mean, it's like, there's nothing there. It's, it's just like this little town, but they just they get a they make make a warehouse. Mm -hmm. They pipe in some air conditioning. They got they pull in these long tables on tractors and just they give you a up. couple of hay bales. And they yeah. say, hey, stand up there. They're grilling steaks out there. Nice. You know, the, 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 the moms are they got these big things of corn going and oh. baked beans and it's kids just, are running loose. Yeah, it's awesome. And here's a really cool thing. I, I just want to share this. I, I know we're getting close Keep on burning. time, but Keep I going. I remember the. So the, volley, the volleyball team came, and I'm like, and they came out and wanted to take a picture with me, and I'm like, the you guys Dodge? play volleyball? Yeah. Because they're all in jeans, boots, western shirts, and nice. they got these big, big belt buckles, these nice. girls. And I'm like, wow, where would you get those belt buckles from? Well, they, they won them in 4-H and rodeo or whatever. Of course. But here's a volleyball team all dressed in jeans and boots. It was just, it is awesome. Love it. 30 seconds, what was your message? Oh, I, it's about Husker volleyball and, and team building and leadership and overcoming adversity and um, dreaming big, you know. I, I, we got, you know, we got a lot of great things we can share with youth and, and people that work in Nebraska and live here. And, you know, volleyball is a state treasure. Everybody loves it. And, and so it's a great platform for us to go out and talk. With Purdue and Wisconsin, you might need a shortened version of that speech this week. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Huskers are hearing it. Coach, uh, great to have you. We'll see you Saturday night against the Boilers. Okay, thanks, Jim. That's head coach John Cook. His Huskers, your Huskers, face the Purdue Boiler Makers smarting after their upset loss at the hands of the Michigan State Spartans an evening ago. But this team is loaded. So fun to watch, as are your Huskers. We'll have it 7.30 airtime. First serve, 8 o'clock Saturday night. I'm John Baylor for the head coach. Good night, Nebraska. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Woohoo! Business technology one, network downtime zero. Being a game-winning IT network takes hard work and an experienced technology coach. That's why our game plan includes Marco. Marco helps our entire business infrastructure perform better and score big day in and day out. With Marco's veteran experience guiding our team, every season is a winning season. Find out what your technology could be saying at marconet.com. 
Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall and Zone 6 in Exarban Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Road townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red. Lutz is an integrated business solutions firm born and raised in Nebraska with offices in Omaha, Lincoln, Hastings, and Grand Island. Lutz provides expert accounting, consulting, financial, technology, M&A, and talent solutions tailored to you. Lutz embraces your business as their own to discover the right solutions to help you thrive. They mind what matters for businesses or individuals seeking a partner to help energize and heighten financial and organizational success. Visit Lutz.us slash GBR. Much like the values of the people of Nebraska, Nebraska Realty was built on the principles of hard work, dedication, and doing things the right way. They believe strongly in the power of creating lasting relationships and the value those relationships hold. Their success is based on trust and the relationships created with the people and communities they serve across the state of Nebraska.